नमस्कार आज वॉइस ऑफ हुगली उसके तत्वाधान में श्री काल सिद्धेश्वर आर्ट्स कॉलेज और एच एस कोटाम्बरी साइंस इंस्टीट्यूट इनके छात्रों के बीच ये संवाद का कार्यक्रम यहाँ पर हो रहा है मैं सबसे पहले आप सभी का बहुत बहुत आभार व्यक्त करता हूँ और विशेष रूप से जो मेरे विद्यार्थी बहन और भाई यहाँ पर उपस्थित है उनका भी आभार व्यक्त करता हूँ कि मुझे युवाओं से यूथ ऑफ हुबली यूथ ऑफ कर्नाटका द यूथ ऑफ इंडिया इनसे इंट्रैक्शन करने का एक मौका आज इस कार्यक्रम के माध्यम से मिल रहा है मैंने पूछा कि मैं कौन सी भाषा में इंटरेक्ट करूं तो मुझे बताया गया कि कुछ हिंदी कुछ इंग्लिश असल मिक्स भाषा में इंटरेक्शन हो तो मुझे ऐसा लगता है कि हम एक बहुत ही महत्वपूर्ण समय पर आज सभी लोग एकत्रित हैं इन द हिस्ट्री ऑफ वर्ल्ड दिस इज अ टाइम वेर वी कैन से दैट फ्यूचर लाइज विथ इंडिया इट इज अ टाइम वेर द एंटायर वर्ल्ड इज लुकिंग टूवर्ड्स इंडिया it is a time when india is going to play a very major role in the world polity and in the development of the world all of us know that india is going through a demographic advantage in year 2020 india became world's most youthful country the average age of india in 2020 became 25 years that means that a country where working population is about 69% and this is a demographic advantage where people who are dependent are less in number and people who can work who can earn for them is in a greater number this is called demographic advantage and if we look at the world history this demographic advantage was initially with europe and while this demographic advantage was with europe the entire europe became a developed group of nations then it went to america america became a developed nation then it went to japan japan became a developed nation then it went to korea korea became a developed nation and 30 years back the same demographic advantage went to china and china become a developed nation and now from 2020 this demographic advantage has come to india our honorable past president apj abdul kalam was the first person to identify this demographic advantage and in 2004 2005 he said that india has to prepare itself for this advantage which is going to come in 2020 and he used to say that if the demographic advantage is not grabbed it will become a demographic disaster because in any country where you have a huge youthful population a population 
which is aspiring and if that population is not transformed into human resource then there will be a population with no work to do there will be a population with no skills there will be a population which will be youth but directionless swami vivekanand hamesha kehte the yuva kehte na youth ko to swami vivekanand kehte the yuva ka artha kya hota hai wo kehte the yuva is shabd ko agar hum ulta kare to vayu shabd banta hai vayu yani air aur vayu kaisi hoti hai vayu jab sahi disha mein chalti hai to it is oxygen वो हमको जीने की राह देती है विदाउट ऑक्सीजन यू के नॉट लिव सो यूथ इज लाइक दैट बट अगर वो ही वायु डायरेक्शन लेक्स होती है डायरेक्शन लेस और ये तूफान बनती है तो गांव को उजाड़ देती है सेटलमेंट्स को उजाड़ देती है युवा भी ऐसा ही है ये जो युवा है ये जब एक सही डिरेक्शन में जाता है तो ऑक्सीजन का काम करता है और जब वो डायरेक्शन लेस होता है तो तूफान बनता है और समाज को सोसाइटी को खत्म कर देता है और ये जो बात स्वामी विवेकानंद जी ने कही थी इसी बात को प्रतिपादित करने का काम एपीजे अब्दुल कलाम जी ने किया था एंड ही ऑलवेज यूज टू से कि नाव इज अ टाइम विच वी कैन से इट्स इंडिया टाइम अनलेस वी प्रिपेयर फॉर इट अनफॉर्चुनेटली We did not prepare for it for a long time. करीब दस साल हमने उसके लिए कुछ नहीं किया It was only when Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji became Prime Minister, he understood that if I don't utilize this time and if I allow this time to pass, this country will never be a developed nation. This country will never come out of poverty. this country will never be able to employ its human resource and realizing that realizing this potential of our country honorable prime minister narendra modi ji started skill development ministry now why it is important because globally if we see the job market has totally changed today you may be a degree holder but you may not get a job unless you have skills there are many commerce graduate today after gst when i talk to my friends who are chartered accountants they say we require huge manpower but then i say there are so many commerce graduate why don't you employ them he says they are unemployable they may possess a degree but they don't have skill of accounting so this is where the entire job market has changed and today the one who possesses skill is more job seeker than the one who possesses a mere degree and realizing that our honorable prime minister started skill development ministry and entire country was surveyed vis-a-vis -vis the skill market and based on that the skill sectors were finalized and the skill development started skilling started today if you go to any industry and if you ask any industrialist what is your problem he says i have a good industry i have a good market but i don't have skill manpower and if you ask a youth what is your problem the youth says that i don't have job i am a jobless so this is a disconnect between the job market and the youth and this disconnect can be bridged through skill development and that is what is understood and not just india but understand that 2020 when india became the most youthful country of the world in a same year the demographies of other countries started changing so in years to come the demography or the median age of eastern europe will be 44 years 
the median age of western europe 41 years the median age of america 37 years the median age of japan 45 years the median age of china 39 years so entire developed world is aging the entire developed world requires human resource to fuel their economy to run their industries to run their businesses because they have now a reverse ratio there are more dependents there are more elderly people in these economies who cannot work for those economies who cannot earn for themselves the country has to earn for them and for that the country requires a human resource now this global human resource is available only with india if india transforms its human resource or its population into human resource we can give human resource to entire world and that is what is realized by honorable prime minister and through skill development and through nep the new education policy just consider our education policy was decided in 1986 and from there there was no change made in our education policy today if you look at 1986 there was no internet there was no artificial intelligence the entire ethos the entire systems the entire methodology and the entire technology which we have today was not available in 1986 so prime minister understood that the education system or the education policy which we adopted in 1986 has become obsolete this education policy can no more transform our youth into human resource and that is why a new education policy has been brought in place this new education policy increases the spending on education by threefold it is from around 2% of the gdp it goes up to 6% of the gdp so the spending on the education is increasing on one hand and on the other hand our basic education was from year 6 to year 14 now it will be from year 3 so the toddlers will also be now part of our system from year 3 to age 18 this entire basic education system will cater to you and what it essentially does it actually gives impetus first to the languages all of us know that after britishers went away we transformed our entire education system into english english is a international language no offense with english but the problem is that the cognitive thinking of any human being is better in their mother tongue we are the people english is a foreign language for us many times we think in our language you think in kannada and then translate it into english i think in marathi and i translate it into english so there is a gap so what prime minister modi ji did with this nep is to create the entire curriculum in the local language and i am very happy that the government of karnataka was the first government who implemented nep nep was first implemented in karnataka and for the first time the engineering as well as medical education was started it is now given in the kannada language see japan is best in electronics their entire education system is in japanese language germany is best in engineers their entire 
uh, education system in Deutsch, that is German language. Koreans are now emerging in uh, all electronics. Their entire education system is in uh, uh, Korean language. China, for that matter, has emerged as factory of world. Their entire education system is in Chinese language. If all these countries could progress imparting education in their own language, then why can't India do that? In fact, it is more scientific for a nation to allow its students to study in their mother tongue because it is the mother tongue which actually allows us to understand the basics. Many times when we study in English, I have seen many students, they are the best, they earn a lot of marks, but they don't know the basics. It is only, you know, they by heart, they learn all those chapters and they write those chapters or they write those things in the answer sheet and get good marks. So they may be informed, but they are not knowledgeable. We have to create a human resource which is not just informed. It has to be knowledgeable. And that is why this new education system is now allowing us also to study in our languages. Secondly, our entire system was watertight. There was art stream, there was commerce stream, there was science stream. After science stream, there was vocational, where engineering after science and medical. So, if we look at our education system, it was in such a watertight compartment and today, if you look at the exposure to the students, students have exposure of everything. So, tomorrow, if I want to study physics, but at the same time, I am good in fine arts. I will either have to choose physics or I will have to choose fine arts. I cannot do both the things simultaneously, but you can do it now. Now in the new education policy, if I am a good painter and at the same time, I want to do biology, I want to do physics, I want to do chemistry, I want to become a doctor. I can do both the things at the same time. So the flexibility, this watertight compartments between the streams of education have been broken now and a person with his ability and with his interest can actually choose the number of subjects or type of subjects they want to choose and I think that is opening doors to one's interest. Many times we find people who are pursuing a degree for the sake of degree. Actually, they have different interests. They don't have interest in that stream. So now, whatever dreams you have, those dreams can be fulfilled through this new education policy. And this new education policy also gives you credit. So there are times, because now in the new education policies, uh, the degree course will be four years course. But somebody does one year and has to opt out. There are times because of family constraints, because of certain other reasons, people have to go out. Then also they will get a certificate and they will get a credit. So whenever in future they want to come back and do something based on that certificate, they will be able to do it. If they do it for second year, they will get a diploma. So two years of study will give you a diploma. It, is, it will not be a case that I could study for two years and then I could not study and I have nothing to do. It will not be a case. And also this entire you know, process is now skill based. It has made skill based. So now you are not studying you know, mere static things but applied things. The things which are really useful in your life to give you jobs. So this entire new education policy will change the way we used to create our human resource and this human resource will not only benefit India but it will benefit the entire world.
and look how the India has transformed. In last nine years, we were eleventh in our size of economy, eleventh in the size of economy. Today, in nine years, we are fifth in the world, and by 2030, we will be third in the world. By 2030, only US and China will be ahead of us, and our Prime Minister aspires that by 2047, we will be the biggest economy in the world. That is the way we are going forward. And when the economy expands, when the economy expands, what happens? It creates jobs. It creates opportunities. Today, when Prime Minister started startup. People used to say, "What is this startup, startup, startup?" But it has given wings to the dreams of our youth. Today, we can see Bengaluru. So many startups are there. Students who were youth who were seeking jobs are now job givers. And after China, now the biggest startup ecosystem is in India. And Indian youth are doing such wonderful things in the tech startups. and these startups are not only reducing costs but it is also easing the lives of the people of our country so i think all these policies of our honorable prime minister and thirdly just look at the geopolitics after covid the entire world economy is in recession america is in recession britain is in recession Europe is in recession. China is in recession. The only country which has not faced the recession is India. India, our growth rate is highest among the world because in past nine years, our Prime Minister invested in people. It he invested in infrastructure. He invested in rural development. He invested in building houses for the poor. He invested in creating toilets for the poor. He invested. in giving facilities to the poor and our gdp growth for 9 years has been fueled by our investment in the rural area our investment in the poor people and that is why we did not hit the recession and india is booming and today for past 30 years china has been factory of world but now everybody has realized that putting all eggs in one basket is not advisable so all the industries in china want to put another industry elsewhere so that they can smoothly move from china and their choice today is india because of prime minister narendra modi ji's efforts because of the ecosystem which he has created and tomorrow's factory of world will no more be china tomorrow's factory of world will be india that is the opportunity which india has got today and i think with all these policies who is going to benefit the people my sisters and brothers who are sitting in front of me it is you who are going to benefit because it is your generation will reap the fruits of all these changes which are made by honorable prime minister shri narendra modi ji i am i may continue 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 but somehow i have realized i have realized that i have passed 30 minutes so i will not speak more but i would like to tell you that this is time for india this is time for us to lead the way for the entire world and you are part of it you can do it have confidence in yourself and go forward and i am sure that your generation will see a day where india will be a developed nation Thank you Jai Hind Jai Bharat